You know what we don't talk about enough? How did Goldie Roger get his straw hat? That iconic straw hat, that critical artifact that has become synonymous with the One Piece series itself. An item which throughout the series has become more and more significant. How did that hat end up with Roger? Did he just randomly find it, happening upon it by chance? How or why? Or did someone give it to him? And if so, who and for what reasons? So this is a question I started thinking about more and more, especially with recent chapter development including chapter 1122 where we saw for the first time the joy boy of the void century also had his own straw hat or at least he most likely did anyways joy boy in chapter 1122 was only shown by silhouette so we can't actually be 100 sure that he had a straw hat per se wouldn't it be funny if joy boy is actually revealed to be wearing missile sunday's cowboy hat but in all seriousness i would be willing to bet pretty much anything that joy boy Boy did himself own a straw hat. Even before chapter 1122, I think we could have all safely assumed that Joy Boy would himself have a straw hat. Because although it is now the hallmark of our main crew and our main character, the Straw Hat Pirates and Straw Hat Luffy, we know there is a much deeper lore tied to the straw hat itself. That it's not just a hat that represents Luffy and his crew, or even Shanks, the previous owner who gifted it to Luffy, but one that's been worn and owned by other important people like the late Pirate King, and it's a hat that also ties to the events of the Void Century, especially now that we see Joy Boy with one, or we almost see Joy Boy with one, as well as that mysteriously oversized hat that we've seen with Imu at Marijuana. And to be fair, the straw hat has always been more than simply an item of clothing. From the beginning of the series, it was a symbolic artifact. From chapter 1, it represented the friendship between Luffy and Shanks, that mentor-mentee relationship, and the promise from Luffy to Shanks. And in that way, it symbolized Luffy's goal, the goal to one day become Pirate King so that he could return the hat and fulfill his word to Shanks. And for that reason, that hat has always been more than just a hat. The straw hat was Luffy's greatest treasure, a point that was emphasized to us during the Orange Town arc, an arc where this idea of treasure and what treasure means was such a central theme and also importantly shown through other characters like Nami and Buggy. But then as the story progressed, the hat started to have even more significance. The history and the mystery surrounding the hat got even richer. There is now lore concerning just the straw hat itself. It's been pretty much confirmed that this hat has some peak connections, connections to Joy Boy and the legendary events of the Void Century. Because as I said, we've also seen a much larger, pretty much identical straw hat, if not for the size, being stored in a cool room at Marajua, somehow preserved for unknown reasons. So more than just having a metaphorical and symbolic significance, this hat now has also a mysterious and intriguing quality. I mean, even when we found out that prior to Shanks, that Roger himself, the late Pirate King, he had also worn the straw hat. Even back then, we could still interpret this idea of Roger passing down his hat to Shanks as simply representing that theme of inherited will that is so prominent in the series. Roger passed it down to Shanks, whereas Shanks passed it down to Luffy. Whereas now, since seeing that straw hat in the world government's possession, as well as in chapter 1122 with Joy Boy also being shown to have once donned the straw hat, it's seeming more and more that this humble item, this one piece of clothing, this straw hat means even more than just inherited will. So then the question that I have is, how did this straw hat hat, an item with so much significance, end up in Roger's possession. And I think this then begs an even larger question. What prompted Roger's journey? What was Roger's goal and mission? What were his intentions for starting his adventure? And why or how did he form a plan to endeavor on such an adventure? Now before we go further, I would like to point out that I am endeavoring on my own journey, a journey to reach 100k subscribers, and I would really appreciate it if you would lend a helping hand or even just a helping finger by clicking that subscribe button. This simple act only takes you five seconds, even less. But the 
impact of such an action is so huge, I would really appreciate it. And it means that you and I can continue discussing One Piece. Okay, so Roger's backstory. Not much is known about Goldie Roger, and especially the details about his early life. Most of the information we know about Roger are of his feats and his life as a legendary pirate. But we do know that Goldie Roger is part of the D clan, he was born in Logetown, and that he already had big intentions to sail the seas. At his first meeting with Rayleigh, the man who would later become his first man, his right-hand man, he invites Rayleigh to turn the world upside down. Words that he would definitely live up to later in his life by sparking the golden age of piracy. But it's very intriguing to consider what Roger exactly had in mind when he said those words. On one hand, a simple explanation could be that he was simply interested in adventure. He didn't actually actually know all that much about the world, its history, its secrets. He was just fortunate to come across these mysteries as his journey continued. From his dialogue in 966, you could even argue that perhaps his original intention may have simply been to do what no other man had done before, which was to sail all the seas. To, in his own words, to complete the unprecedented circumnavigation of the globe. And so in that case, maybe there really wasn't more to Roger asking Rayleigh to join him apart from the fact that Rayleigh had a ship and Roger needed one if he was going to sail the seas. And in that case, you could also point to the fact that, again, Roger was, after all, born in Logetown, and given the geographical proximity of Logetown to the Reverse Mountain, i.e. one of the only two entrances into the Grand Line, you could posit that this idea of a grand adventure on the seas was this romantic notion that had been instilled in Roger from a very early age. You know, a lot of newbie pirates who were looking to make their way into the Grand Line would have likely stopped by at Logetown for supplies, reinforcements, and they may have just simply spied this idea of adventure, seafaring journey into his head, and that's all there is to it. And then it was only during his travels that he began to find out more about the world, its history, its secrets, its lore. And even in that case, you couldn't call that simply a coincidence. Roger is part of the D-Clan after all, so you could say that fate played its hand. You know, that Roger was in his own way a destined one, a chosen one, a special one. Roger was destined to sail all the seas and then find out more about about the lore of the world so that he could spark this next wave of pirates, so that he could pave the way for Luffy, the ultimate destined one. And yet, on the other hand, this all feels too convenient. And I'm sure you would agree with me that it feels more probable that Roger did in fact know more from the beginning of his journey. Because one of the other things that Roger says upon his first meeting with Rayleigh is that their introduction, that their meeting, was fate. Suggesting that at this point, Roger already understands the significance of their meeting. It suggests that Roger understands more about the mysterious ways in which the world works. It's also worth noting that Roger was also already wearing the hat, the straw hat by this point, meaning that whoever gave him this straw hat would have also or could have likely also inspired this idea of fate within him. And here I also have to point out that Roger's name is Gold, or Gold D, but gold, whereas Rayleigh's name is Silvers. And yeah, that could be just simply an aesthetic naming convention that Oda decided on. But come on, gold, silver, and copper? You can't tell me that we're just supposed to buy that's all coincidental. That's way too convenient. And why would Roger choose Rayleigh specifically? Roger was born in Logetown, the island just before the Reverse Mountain. I'm sure there were no shortage of people with ships that he would have known in his life. People with ships who were already eager to go into the Grand Line, as opposed to a man like Silvers Rayleigh, who he had to convince to sail with him. Even that line about wanting to turn the world upside down, that feels like it means so much more. Even more than simply wanting to achieve what no one has done before him. Because in chapter 576, when Whitebeard reinvigorates the age of piracy, and when he affirms to the world the existence of the One Piece, Something that Whitebeard also states is that when the treasure is found, that will turn the world upside down. Very similar, almost the exact same words that Roger used. And we can assume that by this point, 
point. Whitebeard either already knew what the One Piece was, or at least had a very vague idea because of his last conversation with Roger before Roger died. And so for Whitebeard to use this same language about turning the world upside down, that phrase is suggested to have a very particular meaning. And so for Roger to have then said those words upon first meeting Rayleigh, even before he found Laugh Tale, before he found the One Piece, I think we could safely say that Roger definitely knew more. Plus, we also know from chapter 966 that Roger already knew that there were treasures awaiting him at Laugh Tale, suggesting that there were tales, there were stories about this great treasure at this final island that were told to him before. Which is interesting, slightly strange, because in chapter 1, it seemed like no one, or almost no one, knew the existence of the One Piece. In fact, it was Roger who spread the news of the One Piece, of the final island, with his final words. Which leads me to believe that this idea of a vast treasure, a great treasure that was hidden at the end of the world, that was an idea that was only passed down between very small pockets of the world. That wasn't mainstream knowledge. Even amongst pirates, it seems like it wasn't the goal of all pirates to go and find the One Piece. It didn't seem like that all pirates knew of the One Piece. And we can see this from other pirate crews like the Rumbar Pirates, who are active even before the Roger Pirates. And they don't seem to be interested, they don't even seem to be aware of the existence of this great treasure. Which would then mean that it couldn't be just any old pirate stopping by at Logetown that would have inspired this idea within Roger. If someone told him of these treasures, it would have been a very specific type of person. So we could safely assume that this existence of the final island and the treasures found there, that was only known by a handful of people, a very special type of people. Most likely people who were also part of the D-Clan, like a story passed down generations of D-Clan members. Perhaps even more exclusively, it was a story, a legend that was only passed down generations of failed Joy Boys, of almost Joy Boys. It was passed down alongside the legendary Straw Hat. Because we also see in chapter 966 that finding the treasure wasn't Roger's end goal. Roger wants to find the treasure to achieve his dream, another dream. A dream that has since been confirmed by Yamato to be the same dream that Luffy has, but one that is still kept secret from us. Us, meaning that there is something definitely deeper that Roger wanted to do, apart from just wanting to circumnavigate the globe to be the first one to do so, or to even find that great treasure. He wanted something more, he knew of something more. Roger knew more about the world and about its mysteries even before he set sail. Now maybe he might not have known all the details, but he certainly knew more than we were led to believe. And that also explains how Roger already knew the significance of the road ponogram. Did you ever notice that it's Roger that had to explain to Odin how the road poneglyphs work? Odin, a Kazuki clan member, Kazukis being the ones that created the poneglyphs and the only people that know how to still read it, apart from Robin. It was Roger that told Odin and not the other way around. I mean, isn't that odd? In which case, it's fitting that Lin Lin at the time already had one of the road poneglyphs. She's the only other person outside of those who are longtime allies of the ancient kingdom, of or of Joy Boy at least, like the minks at Zo, the fishmen at Fishman Island, or the Kazuki at Wano, Big Mom is the only other person to have a road poneglyph, but it makes sense why she would have one, how she might understand the significance of such an artifact, because of her connection to Rox D. Zebek, another D-Clan member, one who is heavily suggested to also know more about the world, as well as her connection to Elbaf, and the Egghead Island arc has already suggested the very close relationship between the Elbafians and Joy Boy, or at least Nika. In other words, Roger knew of the road poneglyphs, even though the road poneglyphs were part of the secrets that were lost during the Void Century, and in the present age, or even in his then present age, such secrets were only known to a very, very handful of people. But then as we think about the significance of the straw hat, I have another question. Why did the straw hat only become synonymous with Luffy and 
and his crew. Why not Shanks? Why not Roger? Shanks also seems to have worn the hat for many years as he was being active as a pirate, but he was known as Red Hair. His crew was known as the Red Hair Pirates. And this is despite the fact that according to Rayleigh in chapter 506, that straw hat was Shanks's trademark. Whereas similarly, Roger before Shanks, Roger also wore the hat for a decent period before he passed it along to Shanks. And we know this because he was seen wearing it at God Valley. Why wasn't Roger known for the straw hat? And in that case, how did not more people make the connection between Luffy and Goldie Roger, or at least Luffy and Shanks much earlier? Because it's now obvious that Shanks gave Luffy that straw hat for a very specific purpose. It wasn't just a symbolic representation of inherited will, but it now feels like it was a physical in intentional choice to give Luffy that hat so that Shanks could alert the world or at least alert those in the world who would recognize the straw hat and the significance of that straw hat to make sure that Luffy receives help along his journey. It's like Shanks wanted to make sure that those who know, know that Luffy is the one that Roger was waiting for. Sort of a if you know, you know situation. You know? Because I'm sure that Crocus recognized the significance of the straw hat when they met at Reverse Mountain. You know, why else would he go out of his way, helping the crew, giving them his own log pose? I mean, yes, Luffy did help Laboon and Crocus was very touched by that. But I'm sure the straw hat was something that also caused Crocus to be reminded of his former friend and his captain and made him more obliging, more willing to lend a hand. Because in fact, that is his last words when the straw hats leave for the Grand Line. Crocus ruminates that these pirates may be the ones that Roger and his crew were waiting for. We also see that Rayleigh realizes that Luffy is the kid that Shanks told him about, again, making a very special remark about that hat. And I think to some extent, even Whitebeard recognized that Luffy was a special boy, not just because of his relationship to Ace, but because Whitebeard would have almost immediately recognized that straw hat. Whitebeard as a long-time and frequent rival of Goldie Roger, he would have seen that straw hat multiple times, either on Roger or Shanks or even maybe on both of them. In fact, we actually see that in Whitebeard's memory, he remembers Shanks as wearing that straw hat. Whitebeard, very close to his death, also says a very similar line to Crocus that I just mentioned, although albeit differently this time, because this time he remarks that Blackbeard is not the one that Roger was waiting for, whereas he makes sure that his crew saves Luffy. So I'm willing to bet my own left arm that after the conversation that he would have recently had with Shanks, a conversation where Shanks told Whitebeard that he sacrificed his left arm for the new generation, upon seeing Luffy with that straw hat, I'm sure it would have clicked that Luffy is the one that Roger was waiting for, the boy that Shanks sacrificed his arm for. And I'm sure that Roger also had similar significant reasons for passing along the straw hat to Shanks in particular. Shanks, a boy that Roger knew would be important because of Shanks's lineage, his relationship to the Celestial Dragons, Shanks as a boy who represents more and is tied more deeply with the lore of the world. Because the Roger Pirates had two young apprentices on board, but why favorite Shanks? Why grace Shanks with his own beloved hat even before Roger found the One Piece? and found out the significance of all the lore and the secrets of the world. Why give that hat to Shanks? Unless he already had some inkling of an idea and understood Shanks' significance, which again would only be possible because he already had prior knowledge of the world's mysteries and prior knowledge of the importance of the straw hat. And what's really interesting or exciting about all of this, this means that we will likely have some Roger backstory coming our way in the future. You know, details about what sparked Roger's journey, what sparked his interest in the seas. We'll likely get an introduction to a figure who inspired Roger's adventure in the same way that Shanks was Luffy's role model and Roger was Shanks. We're going to see that Roger had his very own mentor, perhaps another failed joy boy or another almost could be would be joy boy, another member of the D-Clan 
who, who himself may have once donned the straw hat and will perhaps get us one step closer to finding out all the secrets of the Void Century and alongside it, the full significance of that iconic straw hat. Anyways, like I said, recent chapters like 1122 got me spiraling and trying to figure out how did Roger end up with this straw hat that was also once worn by Joy Boy, or at least a straw hat that looks essentially the same was worn by Joy Boy. I hope you liked the discussion. If you have some ideas of your own, then please do let me know in the comments below. Please subscribe, share, like the video. You can also join these wonderful people, or maybe it's on this side. Join these people by becoming a Patreon or channel member. And I do want to thank these wonderful people for your continued support of the channel. Thank you, as always, for listening to another one of my crazy ramblings. This is Joy Girl, and I'll see you again soon.